Welcome to that awesome Sabbath program. Enjoy it. Now Julia and Zara will come forward to do the call to worship. Psalm 95, verse 6 through 7. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Now the Valdosta Christian Academy's choir is going to come forward and do worship service with us this morning.
now Sebastian will come forward to do prayer. Let's bow our heads. Dear God, thank you that we're here. Um, help us open our hearts so that we, we can listen today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now it's time for the children's story. And the, you may sit down, I'm sorry. <laughs> now it's time for the children's story and the offering that is um, picked up during this time goes towards um, students that may need help to come to the school that we have here at um, our church. And the story will, the sto- Lindsay Montier is going to say our story this morning. So she has her story here, and it is titled, Afternoon in the Park, okay? And it says, there once was a little boy who wanted to meet God. How many of you want to meet God? (gasps) I do too. Well, this little boy wanted to meet God, and he knew it was a long trip to where God lived, so he placed in his suitcase a bunch of things. He put some Twinkies and a six-pack of soda. He liked root beer. And he started his journey to where God lived. When he had gone about three blocks, he met this old woman. She was sitting in the park just staring at some pigeons. The boy sat down next to her and opened his suitcase. He was about to take a drink from his root beer when he noticed that the old lady looked hungry. So he offered her one of his Twinkies. So she gratefully accepted it, and she smiled at him. Her smile was so pretty that the boy wanted to see her smile again. 
so he offered her a a root beer. <clears throat> he offered her a root beer. Once again, the little old lady smiled at him, and the boy was delighted. They sat there all afternoon, eating and smiling, but they never said a word to each other. As it grew dark, the boy realized how tired he was, and he got up to leave. But before he had gone a few more steps, he turned around and he ran back to the old woman and gave her a huge hug. She gave him her biggest smile ever. When the boy opened the door to his own house a little while after, his mother was surprised by the look of joy in his face. She asked him, "What did you do today that made you so happy?" He replied, "I had lunch." With God, <clears throat> he. But before his mother could respond, he added, "You know what? She has the most beautiful smile I've ever seen." Meanwhile, the old woman also. Who did he eat lunch with? With the little old woman, and the little old woman reflected who? God. God. So that's why she. He said that she. Okay. The old woman also radiant with joy returned to her home. Her son was stunned by the look of peace on her face, and he asked, "Mother, what did you do today that made you so happy?" She replied to her son, "I ate Twinkies in the park with God." But before her son responded, she added, "You know, he's much younger than I expected." What do you think this story teaches us? That each one of us. Can reflect God to the people that surround us. All right, so let's bow our heads to pray. Dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you for the story that Lindsay brought to us this morning, and for reminding us that everything that we do, we should be reflecting God because people are watching us and people are needing you and everything that we do, and they're seeing us. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. All right. I want to ask Ale, Jordan, Ida, and Sevi to please come forward so they can pick up the offering. And then、um, some students that have been practicing really hard with the recorders this year will be playing the music for our offering. Let's bow our heads to pray. Dear Lord, bless the hands that are given today. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen.
going to ask Pastor to come forward and have our family prayer time. You know, you notice we have some yellow cards in the back of the pews. You can write prayer requests on those. I don't read them from the front, but I do bring them home with me and pray for them throughout the week. So as we sing, feel free to bring those up and place them in my Bible. I think we have a slide with the words to the song. And there should be some pencils behind the pews as well. We were so fixated on the kids, myself included, I just forgot about everything else. I was just watching them play. And I'm really grateful for the parents and the teachers for the wonderful work they do with our kids. Let's sing. and minds far away from the press of the world all around to your throne where grace does abound may our lives be transformed by your love may our souls be refreshed from above at this moment, let people everywhere join us now as we come to you in prayer. This moment, I would also like to invite Shannon uh, to join me here in the front. Uh, Shannon is, um, has been attending our church for a while, and she's been missing for a few weeks because she had knee surgery. Um, we've been to her house a couple of times visiting her and she said she's going to try to make it here today. And I said, if she could make it, we're going to have a special prayer for the recovery of her knee surgery. So I'm really glad that Shannon is here with us. Uh, the Lord has been blessing her and we want to pray in a special way for her, uh, need to continue to recover. If you like, you can have a seat right here. Um, and I invite, uh, the church members, as far as possible, uh, if you join me in kneeling, and we're going to have a special prayer, uh, especially for Shannon this morning. Heavenly Father, here we are, celebrating you, our God, our Savior, our Creator. And Father, as we come together, there are so many reasons to praise you. We look at the children up front, Lord, and the gifts you have given them, gifts of music, and Lord, of the ability to just come up and share stories and different things that teach us more about you and cause us to think and reflect about your love. And Father, we're so grateful for all the families that are here today as well. In a special way, Lord, I am grateful that Shannon was able to make it to church. Father, you know, with the knee surgery and the pain and, and all the struggles that come with that, Lord, life has not been easy. But, Father, you have blessed her that she has recovered enough to be able to make it to church. And, Father, you know that there, are the, there is a possibility of some complications. We want to pray, Lord, right now that you be with Shannon in a special way. Lord, that you bless her knee, that it will heal, that there will be no complications. Lord, that you deal with the pain and all these things. Just remove it, Lord, and heal her by your power. Lord, that you do this for your honor and glory, that the doctors and the medical staff will look at her knee and they will marvel at your power at work in her life. Please be, Lord, please be with Shannon in a special way. I pray that you bring her healing and that you bring her spiritual growth and you continue to use her, Lord, as a light wherever she goes to bring blessings to others. In a special way, Lord, I want to lift up the teachers of our school and the staff. Lord, that you will continue to use them as they share Jesus with our kids. And Lord, that you be with our kids, that they may learn about you and learn to love you at this young age, Lord, and that they will continue to grow in their love for you throughout their lives. But help us, Lord, as a church, as a family, as a community, and as a school to offer them, Lord, a solid foundation in Jesus for in which they can build their lives. Please continue to bless us during the service. Open our hearts and please be with those who are leading out in a special way that all that we do may bring honor and glory to your name. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Glad you're here,
Now the school choir is going to come forward and do a special music, and this would not be possible if Vanessa would not dedicate a little bit of her time with us at school. Zuri's sermon is found in Mark 1, 40 through 42. A man with leprosy came to him and begged him on his knees, If you are willing, you can make me clean. Filled with compassion, Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. Immediately the leprosy left him and he was cured. Do you know what this is? This is a bottle of calamine lotion. Calamine is sometimes used to stop itching. Have you ever had chicken pox? Chicken pox starts out as a fever. You have a running nose and you feel drowsy. And you run a cold. Suddenly, red, itchy bumps start growing all over your body, which makes you just want to scratch, 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 but you can't scratch. Scratching just makes it worse. Back in Jesus' days, there was a, a dreaded disease called leprosy. 
leprosy. When you had leprosy, you were unclean, which meant nobody could touch you. And to make matters worse, there was no cure, and you were you were supposed to stay out of the city. One day, a man came to Jesus, forgetting about all the rules about being having leprosy. He said, "If you are willing, you can make me clean." Jesus felt compassion. In love for the man. So he looked at the man straight in the eye and said, I am willing. Be clean. And immediately the man was clean. Unlike chicken pox and like leprosy, sometimes you find yourself in truly hopeless situations. In hopeless situations, where do we turn? Where do we put our own, where do we put our hope? In Jesus. Jesus is our only hope in hopeless situations. Heavenly Father, thank you for everything. Thank you that we're all here. Please help us put our hope in you in very hopeless situations. Help us always have hope in you. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. The scripture for Tiffany's sermon comes from Mark 2, verse 3 through 5. It says, Some men came bringing to him a paralytic carried by four of them. Since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus and, after digging through it, lowered the mat of the paralyzed man, lowered the mat the paralyzed man was lying on. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Imagine I have a blanket that I would be putting on the floor and and ask Mr. Bobby to lie on it and had four children to grab each corner of the blanket and carry Mr. Bobby across the doctor office across the street. Wouldn't that be pretty hard? Well, let's suppose that you could do it. But when you get to the doctor's office, there are so many people waiting to see the doctor that you can't even get up to the door, much less you, you, much less get into the office. Then you notice there's, there's stairs that lead to the, up to the roof. If you could carry Mr. Bobby up to the roof, perhaps you could make a hole in the roof and lower him down to the doctor's office. Do you think do you think that would be hard? Did you know that this is almost exactly what happened when a group of men wanted to take a friend to the doc- to Jesus? The Bible tells us four men car- were carrying a paralyzed man to Jesus. They knew that if they could get him to Jesus that Jesus could heal him. But they couldn't get to where Jesus was because of the large crowd. The four men carried their friend up to the roof and made an opening in the roof. Then they lowered the men down in the roof where Jesus was. When Jesus saw how much faith these four men had, he not only healed the paralyzed man, he even forgave his, him of all his sins. You and I have friends who need to come to Jesus. It may not be easy, but if each of us will do our part, together we can succeed. We may meet challenges, but we must never give up. 
We must hold on to each corner of the blanket and carry until we bring them to Jesus. Please bow your head for prayer. Dear Jesus, we all have friends who need your healing and your forgiveness. May we be faithful and grab each corner of the blanket and bring them to you. Amen. Amen. The scripture for Jonathan's sermon is, He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. Mark 4, verse 39. As you see, I have a toy boat with me this morning. This little boat is to remind us that we are entering into the time of year when many people enjoy getting into their boats and going out onto lakes, rivers, and streams. Have you ever gone out to a boat? I have. Some people like to go fishing. Some like to go water skiing. And others may just enjoy going for a ride in a boat. No matter what you are doing in a boat, it is important to know some things about boating safety. At the very top of the list is always wear your life jacket. The boating season is also a season for thunderstorms. It is wise to check the weather report before going out in a boat. But sometimes the weather can change very quickly. A storm can come up suddenly and you may need to get safely to shore. One day, Jesus and some of his disciples went out on a lake in a boat. Suddenly, without warning, a storm came up. 
The winds blew so hard, whoosh, and the waves were so high, whoosh, that water was coming into the boat, and the boat was about to be turned over. While the winds and waves tossed the little boat about, Jesus slept peacefully at one end of the boat. Some of the disciples became upset that Jesus was sleeping, and they went and woke Jesus and asked him, Master, don't you even care that we are about to drown? Jesus got up and spoke to the winds and waves. Peace, be still, he said. As soon as he spoke, the wind stopped blowing and the sea became calm. Jesus' disciples were amazed. They said, who is this man that even the winds and waves obey him? We know who Jesus is, don't we? And we know that Jesus can still calm storms today. Sometimes there are sudden storms in our lives. Perhaps it is an illness, a family problem, or death of a friend or loved one. During these times, Jesus can help can calm the storms of doubt and fear in our life. He doesn't always take away all of the problems, but if we can trust in him, he will give us peace in our hearts, even in the middle of a storm. Let us bow our heads for prayer, please. Heavenly Father, thank you for another beautiful day. Thank you for a wonderful Sabbath that you gave us. Thank you for those times when you give us peace while we're in the middle of a storm. And and please be with us if we ever have a storm. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Psalms 27, verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Who shall I fear? The Lord is my strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Sick and tired of being sick and tired. Had as much of you as I can take. back and forth and I know that you're thinking you've heard this before I don't know how to say it so I'm just gonna say it yeah fear you don't owe me and there ain't no room in this story and I ain't got time for you telling me what I'm not like you know me well guess what I know who I am, I know I'm strong, and I am free, got my own identity, so fear, you will never be welcome here, take a minute, let it settle in, you probably never saw it coming, Something's gotta give, so I give up you. Whoa, whoa, there's no room for you here. Yeah, I've had enough. And though they can see sun, oh, my heart is lit up. In case you didn't hear it, here it is again. Whoa, fear you don't owe me. And there ain't no room in this door. Telling me what I'm not like you know me Well guess what, I know who I am I know I'm strong And I am free, got my own identity So fear, you will never be welcome here Is there anybody out there just like me? Anybody need feel to leave? If you don't know how to say it, sing along with me. See, fear you don't owe me, and there ain't no room in this story. And I ain't got time for you telling me what I'm not like. You know me, well, guess what? I know who I am. Brave and I am free, got my own 
The scripture for an Emmaus sermon is found in Mark 5, 27 through 29. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. Because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from her sufferings. As you may know, we have five senses. The five senses are sight, smell, hearing, taste, and touch. Each of these senses are very important to us. This morning, we are going to test our sense of touch and discover the power that is ours in the sense of touch. I have, well, Mr. Hayes has a basket full of different objects, and I will ask a couple of you to close your eyes and tell me what it is. So, Grace, could you close your eyes? And Ms. Sharon, could you please close your eyes? <laughs> this, the sense of touch is very important, isn't it? We can often tell what an object is by its size, shape, and texture, all of which can be learned by using our sense of touch. This morning, I want to tell you about a ma- woman who experienced the power of Jesus just by touching him. One day, Jesus was walking through a large crowd of people. The people were crowding around so that he could hardly move. There was a woman in the crowd who had a very bad sore that had been bleeding for 12 years. She had been to many doctors, but none had been able to help her. She had heard about Jesus, and she believed that he could heal her. But there were so many people, there were so many who were people crowding around him that it seemed hopeless. The one thought to herself, if I could just get close enough to touch his robe, I would be healed. So the one... So she pushed through in the crowd and reached out and touched Jesus' clothes. Her bleeding stopped immediately, and her suffering was ended. The Bible tells us that as soon as the woman touched him, Jesus felt the power go out of him. He turned to the woman and said, Your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be free from your suffering. Won't you reach out to Jesus today? If you will, you can too feel his power in your life today. Please bow your heads. Dear Jesus, we long to reach out to you and feel the, your power in our lives today. Please help us have a good rest of the Sabbath and enjoy our Sabbath day. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. The scripture for Alex's sermon is, People were overwhelmed with amazement. He has done everything well, they said. Eve... He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. Mark 7, verse 37. I have several different objects with me this morning. One of the objects that I brought is a soccer ball. How many of you would say you're really good at soccer? Well, some of us may be very good at soccer, but some of us may not play very well at all. Isn't this a beautiful painting? How many of you think you could paint a picture just as beautiful as this? I wish that I could paint a picture as beautiful as this one, but I can't. The truth is, I really don't paint very well at all. This is a music book. I hope you enjoy music. How many of you would say that you're a really good singer? Now there, now there may be some things that I can't do well, but that is one thing that I think I could do pretty well. All of us have some things that we could do very well, but none of us can do everything well, can we? I only know one person that does everything well. You probably know who that person is. His name's Jesus. One day, some people brought a man to Jesus who could not hear and could hardly talk. The people begged Jesus to heal their friend. 
The Bible tells us that Jesus put his fingers in the man's ears and touched his tongue. Then he called out, Be open. As soon as Jesus spoke these words, the man's ears were open, and he could hear. His tongue was loose, and he could speak. The people were amazed and said, He has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. Then Jesus did something unusual. He told the people not to tell anyone what they had seen him do. Do you think they followed Jesus' instructions? No, they told everyone about this man who did everything well. Jesus has done many great and wonderful things for you and me, but he didn't tell us to not tell anyone. In fact, he told us to tell everyone, have you told anyone? Please bow your heads to pray. Dear Jesus, you do all things well. We thank you for all the things that you have done for us. In Jesus' name, amen. All these kids up here this morning, they are very brave because they've practiced and 
I practice things that I'm going to say up here and my knees still shake. And when I was looking at them, they looked like they were that, not nervous at all. So I'm very happy. I'm very proud of them this morning. And we want to finish off with a prayer if we can all bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for every one of these students that you have allowed to be in our school this year. Um, thank you that you've given them um, hope and that you've led them to this day so that they can do this for your honor and glory. We want to thank you, just like the sermon said, that you give us hope, you give us healing, you give us forgiveness, you calm our storms and our sufferings in life, and at the end, you make things perfect for us. We ask you, we ask you this morning to continue being with us and to continue giving us hope in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thanks for watching. If you're blessed by that message, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of them. We try to post every Saturday at 6 o'clock. Also, hit that like button, comment below, share with your friends. We try to read the comments and reply as possible. And may God bless you.